Hello and welcome to Sunny Spain for a bit of a video blog about the new McLaren 570S Spider. Now, as the name suggests and the car behind me rather reveals, this is an open top version of the Sport Series. And if previous experience of McLaren's is anything to go by, it could well be the pick of the range, certainly the most popular. It is definitely the most expensive. Now, at a starting price of just shy of £165,000, this is about £20,000 more expensive than the 570S on which it's based. That's quite a premium. It's also about £20,000 more expensive than an Audi R8 V10 Plus Spider, the newly revealed top of the range version of the R8 Spider. Now that car has got a 610 horsepower naturally aspirated engine and in something like this with the roof open and the ability to enjoy all the character of an engine like that, that really is quite a strong selling point, never mind the price premium. McLaren is facing quite an uphill struggle, especially given that its 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 is powerful, but perhaps not the most characterful in this sector of the market. So there's a possible negative, but everything else looks pretty good for the McLaren. As per previous Spiders, it's based on the same monocell 2 tub as the coupe. That means that McLaren doesn't have to put in any additional bracing. The tub is stiff enough as it is with or without a roof, so the car is very light. We'll get onto that when we get out on the road, but it's a very significant margin. Does it look better than the coupe? Well, I don't know. Let's have a look at it with the roof up. What do you think? Well, certainly with the roof up, it looks like a coupe. And probably most people wouldn't tell the difference were it not for the kind of two-tone look with the roof up. And they, the ability to swap between a proper coupe and an open top car has always been a selling point of these McLaren Spiders. Now, like the 12C and the 650S before it, it's got that very distinctive kind of twin buttress look. They kind of look like air intakes on an F1 car. No accident there. Details that separate the Spider from the coupe include a slightly bigger rear wing to compensate for the change in aero balance, but fundamentally, in every respect, it is very much like the 570S Coupe, and that has to be a good thing. Now, other cars you might consider in this price bracket, Porsche 911 Turbo S Cabriolet, for instance, I would argue that is probably not as pretty a car as this. The 911 Turbo is quite a fussy looking car anyway, with the roof off, it's proportions go a bit weird, it's got lots of intakes and things like that. It does have the four seats, that is an advantage. The McLaren has of course that brand image, that's a very strong thing in its favour and it's obviously a really dramatic looking car, especially in this Sicilian yellow which is one of the new launch colours that come with the Spider. The other is a very fancy pale blue and a slightly more classy dark metallic blue as well, in addition to all the other colours you can get. So in theory, as I say, this stands the potential to be the best sports series in the range. Time to put that theory to the test. So for this first part of the drive in the 570S Spider, I thought I'd start with the roof up in the kind of coupe configuration to see if it works like this and see if there really is any difference between this and the 570S coupe. I guess what the question we're asking is, is there a compromise in going for a Spider version? Now, traditionally, you'd have always said there was, wouldn't you? You'd have always thought the open top version would be heavier, it would be flexier, usually the suspension settings are a bit softer to compensate, all that kind of thing. So yes, usually there is a compromise in going for the soft top, but McLaren doesn't seem to like the word compromise and with the 12C and the 650S, the Spider versions were always impressive for being just as stiff and sharp as the coupe versions. Now, that is because of obviously the carbon fibre tub underneath, and McLaren will tell you that with or without the roof, it is just as stiff, and the only weight gain we get in this car is 46 kilos, which covers the roof mechanism. So it's still a very, very light car, effectively. It's just shy of 1,500 kilos without a driver. Now, I don't want to get too bogged down in stats because there's some driving to be done, but let's just look at how that compares with some of those rivals. And the really, really shocking figure when you compare this with that R8 Spider V10 Plus that I mentioned, this, that does have that lovely charismatic engine, but it weighs 200 kilos more than this. 200 kilos! That's a massive amount. And that 911 Turbo S Cabrio, 
that's about 170 kilos more. Now both of those cars are four-wheel drive, full of gizmos and gadgets and all the rest. So that does explain the extra weight, but does it excuse it? Well, that's the question we'll explore with this drive. And also, does the fact that this McLaren is so much lighter than those two, is that worth the extra 20 grand you'll pay to get behind the wheel? Now then, I should probably demonstrate one of the middle modes of this car. So if I put this little rear window down, one of the criticisms of McLaren has always been that they lack character, they just lack a bit of specialness. Now, they've always tried hard to prove people wrong with that, and one of the ways you can do that is by dropping that little glass window at the back, which in normal use is the wind deflector. But with that down, you can actually enjoy a bit more noise. And the thing about these sports series is they actually sound pretty good from the outside. So to be able to get a taste of that and hear the turbos whooshing away and things like that, yes, it does make this car more exciting. So even before I've dropped the roof, there's a layer of engagement and excitement there, which you don't get in the regular coupe. So that is a good start, is it not? So straight away I've gone from boring McLaren as everybody always accuses it of being into something a little bit more exciting okay it's perhaps not quite as kind of thrilling as an R8 and it's V10 on full chat but I would argue that it's still a pretty cool sounding engine and you get more of a sense of it now they've added some kind of ducting on a sports package which ducts more engine noise under the tonneau cover so you get a bit more sound from the engine coming back at you it's not over the speakers it's a kind of it's a physical sound generator thing so that helps as well so that's it with the little window open we're coming up to a roundabout now below 30 miles an hour I can drop the roof and it takes just 15 seconds and there we go so that's the roof down I am now in spider configuration here's this handy roundabout so I can go back the way I came and we can drive exactly the same bit of road we just came up on with the roof down and see if there is as sometimes happens, a sudden collapse in the dynamics. And you know what? There isn't. Surprise, surprise. Much like the previous McLaren Spiders, this feels pretty much as sharp as it does with the roof up. So again, what are you losing, apart from your 20 grand, by going for a Spider? I've got to say, all of a sudden, all the things we already like about the sports series, and I've been lucky enough to spend the last few months and a few thousand miles in one, so all the things we already like about it, which is to say, the fabulous steering feel. This car still has hydraulic steering, remember, unlike most of the rivals. So the fabulous weight in the steering and the feedback, the way it just ripples over the tarmac, a bit like a Lotus steering wheel in fact. Obviously Lotus stick with unassisted wheels on the Exige and Elise range, but there's a real similar feel to McLaren's, which isn't a huge surprise given quite a few people at McLaren have got Lotus on their CVs. But so there's the steering feel, there's the brake pedal feel. This one's got ceramic brakes, so like the S Coupe, you get ceramic brakes as standard. The GT that I've been running around in has got the conventional iron brakes. There's still a good feel to them. As you can see, there's quite a bit of buffeting. Now, weirdly, I've got the glass de deflector up now. Weirdly, when you lower that, that actually seems to be a bit less wind noise in the cabin, which is a bit weird, but if not perhaps as kind of relaxed and soothing as a, an SL or something like that. 
it's not disruptive to your enjoyment. And just being out here on a beautiful, quiet road in the middle of Spain, it does at last begin to bring some of that excitement that people, personally I haven't found lacking in the sports series, but other people have criticised McLaren's for, that soullessness. All of a sudden, there's nothing like a bit of wind in the air to bring that excitement back. Now, would I have this over a 9 Leaden Turbo S Cabriolet? Well, personally I would. I've never really liked the way 9 Leaden Cabriolets look. I think with all the turbo wings and scoops and stuff, it's a bit of a dog's dinner. I'd argue the Porsche probably pushes the McLaren pretty close in performance. It's a very different car. It's got four-wheel steering, loads of gadgets and gizmos. The McLaren is very simple and kind of focuses on the feedback and things like that. So I think, and on the drama of the looks as well, I think, you know, if you're going for an open top, it's likely that you're going for the more extrovert kind of car anyway. And if that's what you're after, you don't get much more extrovert than a bright yellow McLaren. What about that R8? Well, come back to that weight penalty, 200 kilos. It's a massive, massive chunk of metal the R8's carrying around. And you feel that in the agility of the McLaren. It's only rear wheel drive, of course, but... Okay, it's no Lotus Elise, but it just feels beautifully chuckable and responsive to all the controls. And although the R8 is very impressive and with the roof, and in the Spider version makes more sense than the Coupe because it lets you in on what it's doing a bit more. I'm not sure that an R8 feels quite as special as a McLaren. Never mind the fact that the dynamics are just informed by that weight. The McLaren just feels so agile and light on the road and stiff. I think you can feel the odd little shimmy through the steering column, but then you feel that on the coupe as well. So I don't think there's much lost. 46 kilos over the coupe, are you going to notice that? 570 horsepower, I don't think you are really. This car loses one tenth on the zero to 200 kilometers an hour acceleration figure, 124 miles an hour, one-tenth, and that's the only performance loss you get over the coupe. Okay, it'll only do 196 with the roof down as opposed to 204, so there is that to contend with if you can cope with that huge sacrifice in performance. The rest of the stats, 0 to 62, top speed with the roof up, they're all exactly the same as the coupe. So again, the compromise just doesn't seem to be there. And I think, is this my favourite sports series? I'm still not sure. I think as a kind of, as a sports car, maybe I'm being a bit overly purist about it, but I think I prefer the way the coupe looks, I prefer the way the GT looks, I think. But as an experience, as a thing to be in, I think this is probably the most fun sports series that McLaren has yet made. And given the fact that they expect half of all the sales of the sports series to now be the Spider, it would seem that buyers agree.